اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈسکرپٹو اسٹیٹسٹکس ان دس سیشن وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ڈسکرپٹو اسٹیٹسٹکس ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس سیشن یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو آنسر دا فالوئنگ کوشچنس واٹ از دا کانسیپٹ آف سینٹرل ٹینڈنسی What is the concept of dispersion? And finally, use R and SPSS to measure central tendency and dispersion. Now in this series, I'm going to use these different statistical concepts using both R and SPSS. However, the videos will be different. So if you want to assess or find out descriptive statistics using R and SPSS, and maybe you are watching the video on R, the SPSS link will be shared in the description. So what is central tendency? Let's say you had measured the height of everyone you know, or maybe a group of people that you know. All of those responses by themselves, they do not tell you anything beyond the height of each individual. However, what we are after is a way to explain what is a typical height of a person or what is the typical height of people that I know or in my group. This is called central tendency. For example, let's say you want to work out what is the average height of all your friends. Let's say you have group, uh, let's say you have a group of five people or 10 people who are your friends and you want to find out the height of the, all those five, 10 people. The most obvious way to do is to look at the mean that is average height. You take the height of all your friends and then just sum it and divide it by number of friends that you have. This will give you the mean. Now the mean is simply all the numbers, their height measurements added together and then divided by the number of responses that is the number of friends whose height measurements you have collected. Now in contrast, if the numbers were to be listed in numerical ascending order from lowest to the highest, that is from shortest person to the tallest person, the number in the middle would have been median. Now we use mean for interval and ratio scale variables. We use median for ordinal scale variables. And what if your variable is nominal scale then we are going to use mode. Another similar measure or statistic that measures central tendency is the mode. Now mode is just the number that appears most often. Finally, the range is the difference between lowest and highest value. So mode is just the number that appears the most. For example, I collected data from five people and I represented male by one, female by two. So the first person I interviewed was male, the second was male, the third was male, the fourth was, was female and the fifth was female. So in this case, number one appears the most. So one is the mode. Now this information covers the main ways to look at the central numbers of the data set. But how can we tell how the number is distributed across the range? The range is the minimum and maximum value subtracted. Are the responses relatively close together or are they spread widely apart? What we want is that we need to tell how the data is distributed across its range. And this is a way to explain the general dispersion or scattering of individual responses across the range. And this is what we call variability or dispersion. The quickest way to determine how much the responses differ from each other is to look at the standard deviation. Your standard deviation tells you how much the responses generally vary from the mean. And we want our dispersion to be as low as possible so that you can trust your responses. A low standard deviation means that most of the numbers are close to the mean. A high standard deviation means that the numbers are more spread out. The standard error which can be found by dividing the standard deviation by the square root of the total number of responses tells you how accurate your mean of any given sample from that population is likely to be when compared to the true population mean. The low the standard error, 
the higher is your accuracy. These types of descriptive statistics are the basic information you would provide for describing your data in a research thesis or research paper. Now again, these are the references that are used during the preparation of this session. Now we are going to use R for descriptive statistics. What is R? R is a statistical computing language. Now R is a free open source software which enables users to write and execute code that analyzes a data. Now, apart from SPSS or any other statistical package, we can use languages like R to perform our data analysis. Now, as part of this series, I'm going to use R for data analysis apart from SPSS. The link for the same video using SPSS is shared in the description as well. Now, readers should note that the name R can refer to both the programming language and the primary source software that runs code written in this language. Further, open source refers to the kind of software whose underlying code is made freely available and is generally open to suggested improvements or new features. Now, the R language was designed with computational statistics in mind. In its simplest forms, it can be run from your operating system command line or from the R console. Now, see this figure? You can run it like this here by adding commands here after this greater than sign. However, I recommend an IDE such as R Studio. So, how do we get R? Step one is you have to download R. The link will be shared in the description. And once you download the R language, you have to download the IDE to run the code. And you can download it here. Both links will be shared in the description. It's pretty easy. Just go to Google, type in download R, and you can download R here. And similarly, you can write in download R Studio, and you can download R here as well. So this is download, just click on it and it will download and easily you can install it. Once you've downloaded R, you can download R Studio as well. And then you simply run it. So once you have downloaded it, let's go to R Studio and here it is. Now this is how R Studio will look like. Yours might be different with no variables or values, anything in the data. And this is the console. This is the terminal. This is, these are the background jobs for now. I'm just going to use or create a new script. So how do you create a new file in R? Just go to file, new file, R script. Now I'm going to use that data set to provide you with the descriptive statistics. Now I've got a sample code here, which I'm going to use and describe for you as well. Now the first thing is I need to load the data. Now, what is this? This is a comment. Now, a comment describes the code or it can be used to help you understand the code or provide general comments about what you are doing in R. Now, to load the data, I need an object that can store my data. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to create an object. So this is my object. The data S is my object. Now, in order to import the data, what I will need to do is I will need to create this arrow here. So, which you can do by less than sign and then the minus sign. Then I will use this read.csv function to read my data file. Again, remember it is a case sensitive language. So, where is my file? Again, I will mention that my file is this. This means that my file is in the same folder as my R file. So what you are going to do is you can just go, once you create a new file, let's say, let me copy this here, put it here and let me save it. So click save and I'm going to save it in the same folder where my data file is. So here is my data file and I'm going to save it here. First, descriptive let me name let me name it like this now save it now once you have saved the file and you've written the function that is my file is data.csv remember it is in quotes header is equal to true so you can see the top row 
separator is comma because it is a comma separated version of the data file. Now the first thing that I'm going to do now is load my data file that is in the same folder as I've got my R script into this data object. Select it, run it and now I want to see if I've got the data right or not. So I'm going to use head function. Since it's a programming language, most of the work that is done by functions. Now, what function does is it uses, now for example, if, if we were to do one thing again and again, now instead of writing lines of codes, we define functions that has the code and we simply call that function whenever we need it. So we'll just run the head function and it all looks good. Yes, my data is all good. Next step, once you've got your data done, again, now I'm going to use this, let's say summary of the data, just run it. Again, summary is a function and it gives you the summary of your overall data set. That is each of the variable in your data set. Age, the minimum value, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, maximum value. You can have the mean for individual items as well. So I'm going to use the mean function. Again, look at this parenthesis, then my data object, then the dollar sign and within that data set, my variable of interest. In this case, I've got VIS1. Now we can have the mean for our items. Let's run it. So this is the mean for VIS1. Similarly, we can change the variable as well. So mean is the function, data S is the data object, press the dollar sign and you will have the other variables in your study as well. Let's say what is this? Age, run and here is the average age. Similarly, you can have median values, median function, parenthesis, data object, dollar sign and then the variable, run it. And similarly, you can have maximum value, minimum value, standard deviation for that particular item. What about mode? Well, there is no inbuilt function for mode. So what we are going to do is we are going to use this package. So not every single function is defined by default in R. So what we do is we use packages in R and those packages have different functions. Later on, we, are, we might use different packages to perform more advanced analysis. So how do you install these packages in R? To do so, we are going to go to tools, install package and the name is DESC tools. Here it is and just press install and it is installing. You might have to wait a little bit. Now that your package is installed, you can use or call this package. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to call this package library and in the library I'm going to call DESC tools and now I'm going to use this mode function here. Now run it. Now why are we facing this error? Because we only installed the package. We did not invoke the library. Just writing it won't invoke it. First run it. Now you have invoked it and now we will see the mode. Let's say for this variable here, run it. The mode is six here. What about gender? Let's run this one. Again, it's numeric. It's not showing me the mode. Capital M, now run it. The mode is one here. This is one, the mode. And then the maximum and minimum values, you can have it as well. The maximum for vision one, vision two, the standard deviation as well. So this is how you can use R for basic descriptive statistics. Moving on in the coming sessions, we are going to have advanced statistics as well in R. Thank you very much.